Here's lesson two of the rational functions unit. In this lesson, we're going to look at the graph of a quotient of two linear functions. In part one of this lesson, I'm going to go over with you what the key features of the graph of a quotient of linear functions is going to be, and then we'll go through graphing two different quotient of linear functions. So let's start with the key features. And when describing these key features, I'm going to make a rough sketch of a quotient of linear functions in the bottom right here that I can reference. So in going through the key features, I'm going to be referencing this general quotient of linear functions, where the function in the numerator is ax plus b, and the function in the denominator is cx plus d, where in both of those functions, the exponent on the x is 1, making them linear. And a, b, c, and d just stand for any constant value. So this is just a general quotient of linear functions. So for that general quotient of linear functions, if we have an x value that is a 0 of the denominator only, that would result in a vertical asymptote, right? Division by zero is undefined. So if there's an x value that makes the denominator of the quotient of linear functions be zero, that would result in a vertical asymptote. So what would make cx plus d be zero? If I rearranged this to isolate x, I would see that x would be equal to negative d over c. So if x is negative d over c, the denominator would be zero, making the quotient of linear functions undefined, meaning there would be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative d over c. So I'll write that equation here. And on my graph that I'm going to create, I'll draw a vertical asymptote at some vertical line x equals negative d over c. And I should also mention that in this first property, there's only a vertical asymptote if the x value is a zero of the denominator only. If it makes the numerator and denominator be zero, there wouldn't be a vertical asymptote at the x value. There would actually be a hole in the graph at that x value that makes the top and bottom be zero, not a vertical asymptote. So if an x value makes only the denominator zero, it's a vertical asymptote. But if it makes both the numerator and denominator zero, it's a hole in the graph. And the next property, there is a horizontal asymptote at the ratio of the leading coefficients. So if I look at this general quotient of linear functions, the leading coefficients are a and c. So to find the equation of the horizontal asymptote, it would just be the equation y equals a divided by c. And after we do an actual example, I'll explain to you using limits why that is the horizontal asymptote for a quotient of linear functions. And on my graph here, let's draw in a horizontal asymptote at some horizontal line y equals a over c. And now let's talk about what the graph actually looks like. When we graph a quotient of linear functions, it forms what's called a hyperbola which is a graph that's made up of two branches that are equidistant from the point of intersection of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So on this graph, let me show you what a hyperbola looks like. Notice, as x goes to both infinity and negative infinity, the function is approaching the horizontal asymptote, and as the function approaches the vertical asymptote, it's always going to go either to negative infinity or up to positive infinity. And the graph of this function exhibits a nice symmetrical property. If we were to take one of the branches and do a 180 degree rotation about the point where the asymptotes cross, so watch I'll rotate that top right function around that point where the asymptotes cross, notice it would line up perfectly with the other branch. So to graph a quotient of linear functions, once you have one of the branches graphed, you can translate the points to get the points on the other branch. And how we do that, let's say we have this point right here. We can find the corresponding point on the other branch, which is equidistant from where the asymptotes cross. By figuring out how far horizontally is that point from where the asymptotes cross, and how far vertically is that point from where the asymptotes cross. And then do those same distances, but in the opposite direction, and that will find the corresponding point on the other branch of the hyperbola. And then those two points would both be equidistant from where the asymptotes cross. And now let's talk about how we can find the x and y intercepts of a hyperbola. We can find the x intercept by setting y equal to 0 and solving for x. So in this general equation, if I wanted to find the x intercept, I would set y equal to 0. And then I would solve this equation for x. Well, a fraction would be 0 if the top of the fraction was 0. So I can just set the top of the fraction to 0. And then solving for x, I would see that x equals negative b over a. So the x-intercept would be at negative b over a comma 0. So let's write that in in our properties. 
and I'll label that point on my graph. And then lastly, to find the y-intercept, notice the x-coordinate of that point would be zero. So it says in our properties here, we can find the y-intercept by setting x equal to zero and solving for y. So in the general equation, if I want the y-intercept, I'll set these x's to zero and solve for y. a times zero is zero, and c times zero is zero. So all we're left with for the y-intercept is the point zero, b over d. So we'll write that down. And I'll label that point on my graph at the y-intercept. Now you don't have to memorize these formulas for the asymptotes or the intercepts. If you understood the reasoning as to how we came up with them, you could do that for any quotient of linear functions. So let's go ahead and graph two quotients of linear functions and see what they look like. The first one, we have the quotient of x minus 3 divided by x plus 2. Those are both linear functions. They're both degree 1 polynomials. So what I can do to graph them, I'm going to start by stating the asymptotes of the function. There would be a vertical asymptote at x equals any x values that make only the denominator be 0. Well, an x value of negative 2 makes the denominator be 0, and the numerator be negative 5. Negative 5 divided by 0 is undefined, so there will be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. And there will be a horizontal asymptote at the quotient of the leading coefficients. And the leading coefficients of both of those linear functions are both 1. So the horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 1 divided by 1, which is y equals 1. Let me graph those asymptotes on my grid. So the vertical line at x equals negative 2, and the horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And now let me get some points on the branches of the hyperbola. The first point I'll get is the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I just set y in the equation equal to 0. And then I solve for x. Well, this fraction would be 0 if the numerator of the fraction was 0. So I can just set the numerator equal to 0 and solve. And if I solve this equation, I see that an x value of 3 makes this fraction be 0 over 5, which is 0. So an x value of 3 gives me a y value of 0, meaning that is the x-intercept at the point 3, 0. So on my graph, I'll plot the point at 3, 0. And the next point I'll find is the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, I know the x-coordinate will be 0. So in the equation, I can just set x to 0 and evaluate. So to find the y-intercept, I just have to evaluate f at 0. And that gives me negative 3 over 2, which is negative 1 and a half. So my y-intercept is at the point 0, negative 1.5. I'll plot that on my graph as well. And then to get a good representation of the curved shape of this branch of the hyperbola, I should get one more point. I'll calculate the y value when x is negative 1. Evaluating f at negative 1, I would get negative 4 over 1, which is negative 4. So I have another point on my graph, which is the point negative 1, negative 4. I'll plot that point. And then connecting those points, making sure to approach the asymptotes, I have the graph of one of my branches of my hyperbola. And then to get the other branch, I can just translate these three points, finding the three points that are equidistant from this point where the asymptotes cross. So let's start by translating this point right here, the point negative 1, negative 4. From where the asymptotes cross, that point is one unit to the right and one, two, three, four, five units down. So to find the corresponding point on the other branch, I do the opposite. I move one unit left and five units up. And that brings me to this point right here, the point negative three, six. And now let's do this point, which from where the asymptotes cross is two units right and two and a half units down. So I would have to go two units left and two and a half units up, bringing me to this point, negative four, 3.5. And lastly, this point, the point three, zero, that point is five units right and one unit down. So from where the asymptotes cross, I would have to go five units left and one unit up, bringing me to this point, the point negative seven, two. And then I can connect those points to get my second branch of the hyperbola. And there's our first graph of a quotient of linear functions done. And now let's move on to our second example. In part B, once again, we have a quotient of two linear functions. So I know the graph is going to form a hyperbola with both a vertical and horizontal asymptote. Let's start by finding the asymptotes. There would be a vertical asymptote at any x values that make only the denominator be zero. 
well, an x value of 1 makes the denominator be 0. So there'd be a vertical asymptote at the line x equals 1. Right, if I subbed in 1 into this function, I would have negative 1 over 0, which is an undefined expression. And there would be a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals whatever the quotient of the leading coefficients is. Well, the leading coefficients are 2 and 1. So the quotient of 2 and 1 is 2. So there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Let's graph both of those on the grid. My vertical asymptote at x equals 1, and my horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. And now let's get some points on the branches of the hyperbola. The first point that I'll find is the x-intercept. For the x-intercept, I just set y to 0, and then solve. The fraction would be 0 if the top was 0, so I'll just set the numerator of the fraction equal to 0. And then if I solve this equation, I get x equals 3 over 2, or 1.5. So my x-intercept is at the point 1.5, 0. And before I plot that, let's also find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, I just set x equal to 0 in the equation and solve for y. So let's just evaluate g at 0. Evaluating this, I get negative 3 over negative 1, which is 3. So my y-intercept is at the point 0, 3. I'll go ahead and plot those two points. The x-intercept is at 1 and a half, 0. And the y-intercept is at the point 0, 3. Those points are actually on separate branches of the hyperbola. Right, we'll have a branch there and a branch there. They're on separate branches. So let me actually go ahead and translate both of those points to the other branch, and then I'll go ahead and find one more point. This point's easy to translate. It's just one unit left and one unit up from where the asymptotes cross. So doing the opposite, one right and one down, I know there would be a point at the point 2, 1. And then translating this point, which is a half unit right and two units down, I can go a half unit left and two units up, and I see there would be a point right here at the point 0 0.54. And to get this curved shape of this function, let me get one other point on both of the branches. So how about when x is either 3 or 4? Let's see what would work nicely in the equation. Into this equation, if I sub in 3 for these x's, I get a nice value. So I'll determine what g at 3 is for my other point. Evaluating this, I get 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So the point 3, 1.5, would be on the graph of the hyperbola. I'll plot that point at 3, 1 and a half, that's right here. And then I'll translate that point. That point is 2 units right of where the asymptotes cross, and then a half down. So I'll go 2 units left and a half up and there would be a point right here at negative 1, 2 and a half. And now I'll connect those points, forming my two branches. And there's the graph of the quotient of linear functions. Before I end the video, I did promise that I would explain to you why the horizontal asymptote is at y equals the quotient of the leading coefficients. So let's look at, for this example, why is it at y equals 2? Well, the function we're working with here is the function 2x minus 3 over x minus 1. So why does 2 divided by 1 give us the location of the horizontal asymptote? Well, a horizontal asymptote, if we look at the graph, notice it's at the y value the function approaches as x goes to infinity or as x goes to negative infinity. So to find the equation of the horizontal asymptote, I would just have to find what is the limit of this function as x goes to plus or minus infinity. If it's approaching a value, then I know that there must be a horizontal asymptote at that value. And to calculate this limit, there's a trick we can do. We can actually divide all of the terms by the highest power of x that's in the denominator. Or algebraically, really what's happening is we multiply top and bottom of this by 1 over x, which divides all of these terms by x. So doing that, I see this would equal the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x divided by x, which is 2, minus... 3 divided by x, which I'll write as 3 over x, and that's all over x divided by x, which is 1, minus 1 divided by x. And then as x goes to infinity, both of these fractions are going to approach 0, right? 3 or 1 divided by an infinitely big number is going to be approaching 0. So I know this limit would be equal to 2 minus 0 over 1 minus 0, which is just 2 over 1 
which verifies that we have the horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 because that's the value that this function approaches as x goes to infinity. And this meets the definition of a horizontal asymptote, which would say g of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals some value c if the limit of g of x as x approaches infinity is equal to c, or if the limit of g of x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to c. If either of those are true, there must be a horizontal asymptote at y equals c. So hopefully you enjoyed that lesson. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca, download the sheet of practice questions, and practice graphing these quotients of linear functions. Jensen math.